I say this. There's no such thing as a poker pro. No matter what Norman Chad says on the telecast, it's a total myth. I butter my bread with guys like this. They come out here by the plane load, the bus load, the car load. They think they got the game clocked because they can riffle chips with either hand. Bet, 200. Call. Brunson, Gus Hansen, Seidel, ain't nothing special. I watch them on TV back in my house in Aliquippa. It's just so freaking obvious to me that they're bluffing. <laughs> I know, man. I can always tell what they've got. Oh, sure. It's obvious when ESPN is showing you their hole cards. There's no hole card cam here. You want to know what I'm holding? You're going to have to read my face. Little advice, kid. If you're going to wear the shades to keep me from looking at your eyes, don't adjust the frames whenever you catch an ace. Call. Oh. Oh, honey, don't give your stack a hand job every time you're going to raise. Why not? I raised 500. But Aliquippa, you're the best. You don't know it, but tonight, you're my ATM. Bump it up! Attaboy. I'll hang in. Call. Oh. I bet. A thousand to go. I'm all in. I believe him. Me too. <laughs> ah, it's your big mistake. You're letting him off the hook. Uh, this is how you should handle a bull. Should I call? Never ask a barber if you need a haircut. Because the answer is always yes. Aha, uh -huh. see that? You told me everything. I call. Clubs. Queen Eye. The King. <laughs> Next case. You know, someone once said, if they're helpless and can't defend themselves, you're in the right game. Push the Tudor girls to the river. They're bound to get cracked from time to time. You should always keep something in reserve. Excuse me? Tudor girls? Oh, they were the queens of England. Played them pretty hard against me. <coughs> yeah, I remember. Surprised you do. Well, you came on real strong. You made an impression. Didn't get your name, though. Eddie Town. Eddie? Uh, 
Mount Everest. Eddie Town, you weren't just beat, you were cheated. You made an impression on another fella, too. Old Tropical Henry. Oh, he told you about me. No, he didn't tell me, Dick. He was too busy waving that money all over the place. I've known Henry for many years. Staked him to a lot of games. I know he didn't win it on his own. It soon became obvious where it came from. So you're his bank. It'll be yours, too. I'm listening. Not here. What did I do? You asked for a game, I put you in one. Now I'm humping quarters because you don't own a hardware store, you're a cop. You steered me. You set me up in a rigged game. I tried to talk you out of playing that game. Now what do you want? Information? About how it works, who's involved? Screw you. Screw me? You know what happens to the outside man when the pressure builds up on the guy's inside? I don't know and I don't care. He gets thrown to the wolves. Ow. Get up. You keep messing with us, you'll wind up like that nut bar crackle. First, because of how you look. Second, because it means you're canceling dinner. You got a game, right? What makes you say that? Come on, Ma. <laughs> Only time you dress like that is if you want the table to think you're playing with daddy's money. Come on, let me in on it. I'll give you some easy action. Look at you, always angling. You ever turn it off? Yeah, where I'm from, you can't afford to turn it off. South Philly, right? Yeah. Yeah, Philly. Lawrence Bill. William Regan. You know, when I heard Ted was going to be rooming with the son of the university department chair, I'll tell you, I was thrilled. At least this is one room on campus that won't be party central. I hope not. Nice to meet you both. Excuse me. Listen. Don't think I don't know the pressures that come with being my son especially on this campus. But also remember this. I didn't have the benefit of an example to follow. I had to get to where I am by scraping and fighting. There were no Dr. Marshlands walking the Ivy League halls when I arrived. Look, I know, Pop. Okay, the hard work forced you. I ain't afraid of it either. Ain't. First is the Argo of the streets. Then the streets themselves that lure the privilege. Clean it up, son. I've given you the gift of a good name. Don't embarrass it. Well, you made it out. Yeah. Yeah, I rose up out of it somehow. Seymour says there's a pretty decent 30 60 pot limit game being spread at the Colorado tonight. Mm hmm. Okay. Better watch out. Hope you don't get swept up by hotel security dressed like that. <laughs> it's not a hotel. Mm hmm. Not a hotel, huh? Okay. I'm supposed to see you about my bill? Your bill has been taken care of. It's good that friends in the hospital. You never know when you'll need them. Sam. Oh, look at you. I never should have brought you in on this. Sit down. 
I asked to be. Besides, I got sloppy. Might as well have given him directions. Did my name come up? No! No, no! Who do you no. work for? Seymour Anderson! Seymour! Yeah, forget about it. What happens now? You disappear. Where am I gonna go? That better be a little secret. I don't have any money. Now you do. Keep it under your hat. How long do I need to stay for? Just until it's done. Then we work together again, right? Yeah, we work together again. I'll do better next time. I know you will. Let's get out of here. Miami. Hey, Phil. Nice to see you. Come on in. Uh, we got a last minute arrival. Table's full, but it should open up soon. Thank you. Now, see, you and those jacks are like Fat Joe and the KFC, man. You can't <laughs> lay off even though you know they're killing you. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. My name's Clark. How nice for you. So you like to watch that big boys play, huh? Even more fun to watch them lose. Mm. How'd you find this game? A friend took me off. Seymour said no doubling up. You're beefing my action. My action now. What are you doing here? I scouted this game. $5,000 buy-in with a bunch of stupid conventioneers who take a drink after every hand they play. This is my game. You know, I think we settled that. Actually, I heard there's a pretty decent 30-60 pot limit game being spread over at the Colorado. You should check it out. You know what? On second thought, I'm feeling kind of antsy. I'm not going to wait after all. I'll catch you next time. Sure thing, dear. So, Eddie, did you, did you know that when the French invented playing cards, that each suit stood for a different class of society? I mean, the hearts represented the church, the spades symbolized the army, diamonds were the aristocracy, and the clubs, the peasants. <laughs> 600 years later, not much has changed. Clubs are still bleeding to the diamonds and being reassured by the hearts that the spades are protecting their interests. Ah, uh, plus a change, right? Oh, ho, ho, ho. hey, that's good French, Eddie. Yeah, French. you should hear my Spanish. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you got face to face. You understand the next move? Yeah. I'm not gonna kiss his ass. He's surrounded by that. I'm sick of it. Yeah, that's what you kids want to think, that powerful people hate yes men. But believe me, Eddie, your ass is used to getting a tongue bath. It's real hard to go back to the shaman. Now, you gotta win him money at the table. That is all he's gonna respond to. Yeah, I can do that. Good, I know you can. Is Crackle okay? Just heard some talk around the tables, that's all. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was my fault. I was gonna tell you. Are, are you rethinking this? Because I would understand if you were. I'm not sure what Henry's told you about my approach. Not a word. Oh! Never even said approach. Anyway, what I do know is that there's a lot of people out there gunning for me. And believe me, baby, they're gunning. I'm a big trophy. Some people may even try to cheat me. So I need to be protected. Keep things even. Agreed? Hey, I'm not here to disagree. 
When I see a strong young player with the makings of becoming a real pro, I'll put him in a game. I'll bankroll him. Take a piece of him. 50% of the winnings is mine. It's kind of like the farm system of poker. <laughs> if you sit with me, you play to win. But you gotta watch my back also. And keep the momentum going. And keep things on an even keel. Make sure the scales don't tip too far to one side. I think he understood what I meant when I said the word even. What do you think? Sure. But why me? You got a good table image. You're kind of like a new breed. When I sit down at a table with all those dirt kickers, you'd think the rodeo just came to town. <laughs> with you and I, it would be different. Red state, blue state, you know what I mean? No, I have no idea. I think you might have made a mistake there, Henry. I could get to liking this kid. Even Wally Pip wasn't dumb enough to bring Lou Gehrig to batting practice. <laughs> Thank you. I want Don Everest. Hanging in my basement next to the six-point buck I bagged last winter, I think you can help me make that happen. I don't hunt. My brother was Wayne Nickel. And he tried to get you to help him before Everest had him murdered. I read about him. I, look, I, I feel bad for you if that's the way it happened, but I, I never met him. You're going to help me prove what my brother couldn't. You ran the sports book into Colorado. Lowball worked for you, and Everest had a piece. You know where the bodies are buried. I don't know. I can't help. I know an associate of yours got busted up by Everest. I want him on the record about it. Look. I can't tell you what I don't know. Does Everest cheat and worse? That rumors. You want more information? Go spread some money around. There's plenty of people know things. I'd be happy to tell you for a few bucks. Okay. Hey, no, look. You're talking to an old man. He's trying to figure out a way to make his life work in a town that has long since passed him by. Good luck, pal. Seven bread? Yes, I do. I bet the pot. Huh. Me too. I call. <laughs> I lied about having the seven. Yeah, well, me too. You thinking about whether or not to bet? Oh, I know I'm gonna bet. I'm just thinking about where I'm gonna take you to dinner after I win this hand. Why don't we decide that later? I bet the pot. Which I do believe put you all in. I call. I got the king. Me too. So we split it. It's meant to be. I also have the ace. Well, we're still on for dinner tonight, right? I just have to hit the ATM. Oh, I'm sorry, Brad. I only date card players. Yeah, well, I am a card player. No, you play cards. It's different.
way to conduct a lap dance. No, you tease them during the first song. You wait for the second song to lose the top. Then when they're ready to pop and the third song hits, that's when you drop everything else. Maximum payday. But I don't think it's gonna matter in this case because I'm still bendable, so you're not hireable. Next. Who's next? I am. You're not next. And uh, you won't be able to wait for the second song once you see these. Wanda Cole. Come on, just take a quick look. Wanda, let's see what you've got under the hood, please. I've been waiting here all morning. And you're going to keep waiting. I told you we might not get FDA approval on the first go around. It's part of the risk of these pharmaceutical options. Neil, I don't need a primer on derivatives. No, what you need to do is satisfy your margin call. $20,462. Now I've kept my guys down in settlement off you, but they're not gonna wait forever. How much longer do I have? If you're not holding by closing bell today, I'll start updating the rest of your account, liquidating your blue chips first thing tomorrow. Place there's the yellow sticker. Late fee. <laughs> she best it. getting in the way of my plans. This is a private conversation. Let's just sit down. Young lady, do you really think that anyone in this town would ever hire my daughter to dance and parade around on some show stage? I need money to live a certain way. You've got a big living space and plenty of spending money. Now, what more do you want? I mean, live. How much do you need? Stack and a half. Stack and a half. I don't suppose that's enough to ensure that I'm not going to find out that you're part of a two-girl act at the Desert Dream Show Palace, huh? Maybe. How about having dinner with me? Well, I have these now. I'm going to put a little 21 tonight. Why don't you do that after? Probably could. Mwah. You can look up now, Eddie. You're gonna love this. Omega-3 is from fish oil, spirulina, prune juice, and kelp. Liver detoxifiers. It's making me sick just listening to you. Come on, drink it. Reoxygenates the blood after all that dead air in the casinos. Huh? No, it keeps your mind sharp. Because if we are not sharp, we are gonna get gutted. Are you worried? Of course. Did you lay down there? Yeah, but I always knew this is where it could come apart. No amount of planning can prepare Eddie for what it's really like on the inside. When you're running with the matador, nothing's off limits. Point at it, it's yours. Cash, your pockets are packed with it. Action, as much as you can choke down. <sighs> Broads, forget it. So how's a kid gonna keep his head on straight with all that at his feet? 
You think he's gonna get sucked in? Of course he's gonna. The question is, can he pull himself out the other side? Mark. So. So? How'd you do? Winning session. Uh, no, it didn't go my way. Yeah, so. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a new day. I want you to go to the house of Ching. House of Ching? I don't feel like chow mein. Then don't order any. See, when dealers get off shift, they go there to play a two-table, thousand-dollar buy-in, no limit. With patience, you can pick them off. Okay, I'll get after it. Me too. Yeah? Mm-hmm. See you later. Hey. Hey! It's bad enough you stole my game, but now you're kiting the profits, too? Look, I told you I didn't win. You forget my friend Phil runs that game. Mm -hmm. He said you cracked it for 20 grand. What do you want? The pockets are empty, right? You know? We all chose a profession. We're not giving a damn about another person who's a positive. But I think that's the part you like best. Just being out for yourself at the table. And you know what? So do I. But in this case, it's not helping. We're supposed to be in this together. What, so you think you got a read on me now? Huh? <laughs> I'll take the stairs. Right, moved the line on Denver. Just took six dimes from the can the other way. <laughs> the signals want to get down in Cleveland. <laughs> no, already kicked off. Action's closed. Seize all of that. There will be formal proceedings. You can all count on expulsion. Pops. You are a selfish young man. Forget what it does to my reputation. You've taken these young men down into your gutter with you. What is it, Clark? Is it just the money? I, I, I didn't give you enough. It's not about what I'm giving. It's about what I can get for myself. It's what you always talked about, doing it on my own. Well, you're on your own. Good luck. Poker has put us in the middle of a genuine phenomenon, and Don Everest is threatening that. You got tournaments on TV every single night. It's the only thing my kids will watch. You got online poker getting more hits than porno sites. This is ground zero for poker, and once they're here, we got them. So, what we got here is a threshold moment. It's like uh, golf was in the 50s. You know, back then, the players used to make deals with each other all the time. Huh? The final pair would just cut up the prize money so they could both eat. Until the TV money got so big that everybody's eating steak anyway. And then they cleaned up their act. Because they realized that under public scrutiny, even the slightest hint of collusion would bring down their sport. I thought you had to work up a sweat before something could be called a sport. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Poker's not a backroom game anymore. It's in the spotlight. And the gaming commission's gonna be looking at it closer too. If we keep treating it like it is, it's gonna disappear. It's gonna take all those nice new pockets with it. The reason this casino is ground zero for poker is we have a legend of the game who plays here every day. He's like the damn Pied Piper. People follow him wherever he goes. And I don't want them following him to another casino. And the reason I pay you to deal with it, and to deal with the Gaming Commission. So, anything else? No. No, Jimmy, no. All right, sir, something special in your career. Said no one's ever been able to pick up a tell on you. Oh, hell, I'm easy to read. I smile when I got a good hand, and I frown like hell when I get a bad one. So that's your secret? 
Yep, that's all there is. I call. Me too. That means that diamond hit you, didn't it, Don? I'm not telling you. No, thanks. It's a hell of a laydown I'm making. Throwing away two pair. I'm not drawn for a full house against a made flush. That was a quality play. Congratulations. Don't watch too many of those specials. You have to start worrying about you. At least I can say I'm losing to the best. He is the best. Oops. You had rags? Nothing. You're not mad at me, are you? Chips. Let's see if you can bluff me out of another pot today. That was great coffee housing out there. <laughs> we had old Jungle Jim on tilt. <laughs> Just keeping things on that even keel you were talking about. You made your flush, though, didn't you? That obvious? Why'd you throw it away, then? I just thought that's how it worked. You think I'm a cheater? Guess I misunderstood. But I'd take luck out of the game if I could. Truth is, without luck, I'd never lose. <laughs> I was okay with that for a real long time. I figured it was just part of the game or part of life in general. Then one day, a few years ago, I was heads up against this kid, a little panty-waisted son of a millionaire. Thought he was Amarillo Slim or something like that. And I had him beat, an all-in hand. Two cards out of 48 would help him. And wouldn't you know it? Perfect catch. He goes runner, runner on me and wins on the long shot. It's 989 to one, he hits both those cards. And if that's not bad enough, takes the money, my money. Then all of a sudden, he's out of nowhere, he starts dancing around like some kind of a crazy animal. Like, who's the matador now? And where's my cape? <laughs> yeah, well, what can you do? That's poker. Well, I guess that's a small-time way of thinking of it. If you think the game starts when you buy your chips, I kind of figure it starts when you get up in the morning, and I don't think it's over even when you walk away from the table. That's yours. This is 5,000. Yeah. Hi. Oh, hey. I guess that probably turned into a yes, huh? I thought I'd throw you a bone. Oh. This is Eddie. This is my daughter, Dee. Hey. So you uh, work for my father now? No, I don't work for him. He's just a young poker player, a very promising young poker player. Would you grab my jacket and I see you outside? No problem. You look promising. So uh, if you don't work for him, maybe I could put you to work. Well, there are some jobs I am willing to do. to know where someone went. Why am I gonna tell you that? For that. Now how am I supposed to recognize this passenger? He doesn't have a face you'd forget. 
Hey. Tricked me at the table last night, huh? Oh, I was just playing poker, nothing oh, personal. No, 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 no. Poker's I bet, you bet, not I bet, you know, and then you blink your eyelashes at me, make me think I get to screw you later. Threw me off my game, right? I learned to concentrate. No, you insulted me. Oh. Took my mind off the game. You think you know me? Huh? You don't know me. You don't know how committed to something I can be. Oh. I won it. Listen, let it cost me money, a lot of money. And you're gonna pay me back one way or another. Let go. Are you hearing me? Huh? Let go. Let's go. Hey. hey. I don't think the lady is enjoying your conversation very much. All right. So why don't you just take it on down the road? All right. Look. We gotta keep the roughneck element out of here. You all right? Yeah. Table disagreement. Yeah, well, part of getting it done is letting them believe that it was their fault that they lost and not that you took them. It's good for repeat business. Thanks. All right. Done. But you had a real sweet game going on over here. No, that's not big enough for you, Don. Oh, come on, you know me. I don't mind picking up a few small pots on the way to the big one. Yeah, this game's getting stale. It's about to break. Yeah? Maybe I'll freshen it up a little bit. Hey, come on, Don. My father's in county. She's a couple of grand for raising his bail. Looks like she's got enough there to bail us both out. Who knows? Maybe it'll be the answer to her prayers. Hello? Let's play. How did you get in here? Vegas pass key. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to get them to tighten up on security or at least raise their price. I'm glad you're finally here. Been going back and forth on whether to go through with this or not. Go through with what? This belongs to you. I should have never stole your game. You were right. How'd you come up with it anyway? Another game? No, let's just say I, uh, Restructure my portfolio. Too young to be carrying blue chips anyway. It's our money now. This is going to Seymour to hold. Seymour. You treat him better than a father. Why? Oh, come on. I deserve to know what I'm a part of. Seymour and Everest used to run the sports book at the Colorado when I met them. He wasn't going to win any Samaritan of the Year awards, but something about me must have gotten to him. My father was locked up, and I almost had his bail money when Matador cleaned me out. That's raw. The next day, there was a betting slip with a note from Seymour that said to cash it right away. It was a $40,000 winning ticket on a game that had already gone off. He'd post-dated it. Nice. The next day, when I went to cash it, they wouldn't honor it, and Seymour was gone. And I heard that he'd been beaten almost to death and was in a hospital outside of town. That Everest and the rest of them had done it to him. And what about your pops? He died in jail. Seymour lost everything trying to help me. The point is, whatever he was before, he's a good man. Now see, that's half the point. The other half is that, I mean, if you cross the matador even a little bit, he will take you out. So what do you want to do now? What do you think? Me too. Let's do the best thing there is to do in a hotel room. Five hundred dollar freeze out. Yeah. Oh, but hey, hey, you have to spot me that buying. <laughs> I've known my daddy to run with a high rolling crowd, but this is a whole new thing. Well, maybe I was just waiting for somebody who likes to play 21. Drink? I don't think so. 
not on your daddy's home field. Where then? I need you to wire some money. Twelve hundred. I know, I said I was coming home, but now things have developed. I realize he was a son of a bitch much of the time, but he was my brother longer than that. I'll sell my Winchester when I get home. Just wire it. Fine, you sell it. Just send the money. I can't come back now, I'm getting closer. I miss you too. Hug your kids for me. Donnie. Just like you said, you put a man on him, he's not going anywhere. When were those taken? Less than 24 hours ago. There you go. Thank you. This could hurt us. Yeah. Most players don't know their risk tolerance. They fool themselves into putting up more of their bankroll than they're truly comfortable with. And this causes them to play tight when they should play loose and press when they fall behind. Thing is, if you're not comfortable at a certain height, you're gonna get crushed. But you can handle it. And I mean really handle it so that your heart's at 60 beats a minute when everything you've got's in the middle of the table. Well, then you know the difference between sleepwalking and really being alive. I'm trying to show these to somebody all day. On the next.